Hey y'all, my name's Anila and welcome to my channel. You know, my hair is a mess right now. Now I'm looking like Hagrid from Harry Potter. But trust the process because my hair is going to go from this to, to this when I'm done straightening my hair. So off camera, as you can see, I brushed my hair, so that's why it's looking so poofy. I either misplaced or I ran out of my heat protector. So I'm not going to put any on. Do not follow my date. Always, 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 always put on heat protector on your hair. Okay, so quick little hair tip with the way that I straighten my hair is I get small sections at a time. That is the best way, and honestly the correct way to straighten your hair because that is the only way that you're going to get a perfectly perfectly straightened hair. Now, I completely lost my butterfly clips. So I'm using a scrunchie to hold up the rest of my hair while I strain what's down. But you see how it's like small sections. It's like barely an inch. That is what you want. And another hair tip, I see a lot of girls, I know my hair is a mess, but what I see a lot of people, not just girls, people do is they grab their hair, they straighten it, and right when they get to the end, they stop. What you want to do if you want to get that perfectly straightened hair is you're going to want to get it and continue all the way through until the, all the hair falls through. That is the only way you're going to get your ends straightened correctly. Because if you stop within like the last inch or two, inch and a half, your hair is going to look straightened, but your ends are going to look poofy. So you're not going to get that straightened hair. Sorry if I'm not looking at the camera, I'm looking in the mirror and then I'm looking at myself. But a lot of the times girls are like, oh, it's not looking the same way as when I left the hair salon. But because you are not straightening it correctly, you want to go all the way through to the ends till all the hair falls out from inside the straightener. I'm going to get another section. Again, as I work my way up, I'm getting like one inch sections, no more than an inch if you want your hair to be that perfect straightened. House update, I have been living here, I believe has been five months or it's already gone by so fast. It's, and not much has changed. I'm still loving, absolutely loving my house. And we haven't done anything to it. We just pretty much have the basics, like our couch, our bed. We haven't done any like drastic changes to the house. Well, we haven't done any changes at all to the house. Um, I have some ideas that I want to do to certain areas of the house, but I think I'm gonna give it like maybe like a year or two living in the house the way it is, and then I'll make my changes to the house. But for right now, I'm just enjoying the house as it is. But I would have to say living in this house, I have already almost burnt down the house specifically in the kitchen and i have almost i would say flooded the house as well which was actually pretty funny okay so let's talk about the fire so i know how to cook that i do know but catching things on fire is my specialty I don't know what is it with me and catching things on fire. Now, I was cooking something in the oven and I had a rag to take out the pan. So as I'm grabbing the thing out of the oven, I didn't notice that the bottom piece of the rag was touching the coil. The coil was like bright red, like it was hot. And so as I'm bringing out the pan the bottom is in flames and it's burning my fingers so i like set it down real quick i throw it in the sink and i turn the water on 
and oh my god as i'm doing this i'm panicking but i'm trying not to make it noticeable because i'm in the kitchen joe's on the couch that's facing away from the kitchen claudia my daughter was on the other couch and so she can see me and she sees the flame and she sees that i pretty much almost caught the house on fire and she's like oh, and i'm like shh don't tell dad don't tell dad shh. and then she's like oh and joe sees claudia do that and without turning he's like what did you do let me guess you caught something on fire again <laughs> oh my god i could not stop laughing i was like he's like how did you manage to catch that on fire so i'm explaining to him what happens like oh my god i could not stop laughing i was like it it just had to happen i had to break in the kitchen it, it was just hilarious but the other times in her at her previous place i have maybe like almost caught the entire kitchen on fire i would have to say more than five times <laughs> which were honestly quite hilarious it was it was hilarious okay so this next part i'm gonna do off camera and then i'll come back because i'm already at the part where my glasses meet and i have to like zoom into the mirror because i'm blind and i have to take these off so i'll be back okay i'm back so with my fire story at our previous place I was boiling chicken. It started overflowing in the in the pot. It's overflowing and it goes over the sides and it just starts to flame, like huge flames. And I take the pan from the handles and I move it over to the other coil. And the flame does not stop. And at this point, I am panicking. So I get the cup and I fill it up with water and I just go and you just hear and we have fumes everywhere like all over our place. The smoke alarms went off. I had to open the door to air it all out. It was just horrible. My daughter was like, really mom? Really? I was like, oh my god. The second time that it caught on fire Again, I don't know what it is with me and boiling chicken. I always catch it on fire. It the same thing happened. I was not paying attention to it. I got distracted. So the flame was little. So I was like, oh, it's nothing too big. I take it off. Tell me why my bright idea was to blow on the flame. I went and the flame went. It blew all the way up to the air vent. It was like black. It almost burned my eyebrows, my lashes, my mustache. It almost blew it all off. Like it was, I don't know why my brand idea was to freaking blow on the fire. I just went a little and it went. Now I know never to blow on freaking fire. The third time, I panicked. Again, chicken is my worst enemy every time I freaking boil it. I'm boiling chicken, it overflows. I'm getting stuff from the, the refrigerator. All I hear is the crickling sound, you know, when like water touches something hot and it's like that crickling sound. Okay, I hear it. It's getting louder. I turn around and it is huge flames coming from under the pot. And at this point, Joe's home, so he can help me. So the fire does not stop. I take off the pan and I'm like, I'm gonna get water. He's like, don't get water, you're gonna make it worse. And I'm in the kitchen, he's sitting down laughing at me because I'm in the kitchen and I'm literally like, literally patting out, fire! up and he comes turns off the stove and it dies it's like oh my god he's like why are you panicking i was like i don't know but it was huge 
I was like, oh my God, it, I'm not even straightening my hair anymore. It was, it was just, I don't know. I don't even know what to say anymore. But on the other stove, it has the coils, like the coils that you put your pans and your pots on and it turns red when it's hot. Now this stove that I have at home is a flat top. So I'm hoping I don't catch that on fire. Now, the flooding situation was so freaking hilarious. I don't, I don't know how it, it managed to happen. Well, yes, I do know because I have a story for it, but it could have honestly been prevented. So we had our washers and dryers in the garage. I had called over my brother to see if he could come and help Joe pick him up the stairs because our laundry room is upstairs. My brother comes over, we're talking and everything. So before he's ready to go, he's like, okay, let's get this out of the way. We get the washer up first because it is the heaviest. Well, I shouldn't say we because I didn't do any of the labor. They did. We get up there. Okay, let's just say this is the water hose. This end that connects to the wall is connected to the wall where the water comes and shoots through. This end needs to go to the back of the washer. So they get it up there and they get it into the laundry room. Well, halfway because where the washer goes, we have a, I believe it's called a drip pan. Like if the water was to leak or whatever, it goes into there and it goes down the drain. Okay, so we have that. It's like maybe like an inch and a half, two inches thick. And you have to get it into there. And we couldn't figure out, we were there standing there for like maybe five minutes trying to figure out how to lift the washer to get it into the drip pan. So we're there trying to figure out how to do it. And, you're, and I'm like, you know what? You know what? I don't care if you break the drip pan. I can maybe find someone to weld it back up because it's metal. I was like, I'll find someone to weld it back up. If it breaks, just get one end over and then just drag it in. If it bends, it's fine. I'm sure I can figure out how to fix it. They're like, are you sure? I was like, yes, it's fine. So I'm still holding on to this end that is supposed to be connected to the back of the washer. They're there pushing and pushing it and pushing it. And my water line, I know most water lines in the older homes, it's like the screw, you have to turn it to turn the water on. These new houses have a push start. Like you have to push it to turn on the water. Not, it's no more of these little screw knobs. So they're pushing it and finally, I don't know who did it, my brother or Joe, they grab it and just, whoosh, they push it and it's perfectly. Tell me why, uh, tell me why the push start button did not have a stopper on it. It pushed it in and I just see water gushing out from this and I'm like, water, water. And I'm spraying everyone. I am spraying the walls. Joe and my brother are soaking wet. And they're screaming at me, put it down, put it down. And I'm like this with the water. So I'm like, water, water. And they're like, put it down. So finally, I, I grab the water hose and I just go and point it down. And it's going down the drain. And finally, Joe reaches like over the washer and pulls it to stop it. Oh my God, it was the most hilarious thing ever. I wish we caught that on camera because the wall was soaking wet. Why well, would I say it was, well, yeah, it was kind of soaking wet. It dried pretty fast, so hope, thankfully there was no water damage anywhere. My brother and Joe were soaking wet. I was like, we're like laughing at each other. They're laughing at me because I'm over here swinging water hoses everywhere, like screaming water, water. And oh my God, it was, it was a mess. It was a complete mess that day. I don't know how that managed to happen, but it happened. 
it was it was so hilarious i wish i caught that on camera <laughs> that's how i almost caught the house on fire well the kitchen and that's how i almost flooded the house within the first month of living here so those two things happened and then also i don't know if i should be saying this but i'm gonna say it regardless i think we have friends in the house at least I'm going to call them friends because I don't want them to be anything other than friends. Me and Joe got home. Me, Joe, and Claudia actually. We had got home and we we're in the garage. Me and Joe. Claudia's downstairs on the couch with her iPad plugged into the wall. She's playing her games and watching videos. Me and Joe are doing, I don't know what, we're moving stuff around the garage and we're cleaning it a bit. And we just hear poof, 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 poof. And we look up. We're like, what is Claudia doing? What is she doing jumping? And then again, we hear poof, 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 like three times. Like it sounds like someone's walking but hopping at the same time. I don't know. We look up. So I'm like, let me go see what she's doing. So I go peep my head out the garage door. She's sitting on the couch. And I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm watching video. Why? She's like, did you? I was like, did you just go upstairs? She's like, no, I've been sitting here. Why? It's like, did you just go upstairs to go get my chargers? To go get the chargers? She's like, no, I've been sitting here. Why? I was like, I was just asking. I thought you were upstairs, and I was gonna tell you to go get something. So I go in the garage, and I'm like, she's sitting on the couch. And he's like, what do you mean? She's been sitting on the couch. She was not upstairs at all. He was like, I'm just gonna ignore that. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I'm just gonna ignore the fact that we just heard someone upstairs stomping. So I was like, okay, I'll leave it at that because when he says he's just, that he's just gonna let it go, I know just to let it go because Joe's not one to pay much attention to it. I wouldn't say he's scared because if I do say that, he'll be mad at me, but he just pays no mind to it and doesn't want to believe it. Me, on the other hand, I'm there investigating and interrogating it, trying to see if I could hear it again. But nothing. So we left it at that. I never asked her again. I never brought it up again until now because I'm telling you. So we left it alone. I would say a week later. We were sleeping in the loft area because Claudia's bed was not in the house yet. We needed to bring her bed into the house and it was not in yet. So we have put our mattresses in the loft area. So it's me, Joe, and Claudia sleeping on the bed on the mattress in the loft area. Let me tell you, we do not have any night, night lights. I like to sleep with the night light. Claudia likes her night lights. Joe likes it pitch black. It is pitched black. The hallway is dark. Like you cannot see anything at all. Like you need a flashlight to walk down the hallway or you're gonna crash into the wall or you're gonna go tumbling down the stairs. Joe had already mentioned before, it's kind of creepy because it's pitch black and I, you have me laying on the side of the bed where it, I could see the hallway. And I'm like, you're fine just don't think about it and nothing will happen a couple days pass and we finally get Claudia's bed her bed is in her room so she finally goes into her room we had got her the led lights it's under her bed that's her night light so i'm like okay fine she's laying in her room why we decided to keep on sleeping on the loft in the loft area i don't know why but we did joe is asleep I'm on my phone, my daughter is asleep. The house is empty, so any noise you make, it's like echoing all around the house. So if it's happening on this side, you hear it on this side, so you think it's on this side, but it's actually on this side. So you get what I mean. So I hear noises and I'm like, what the heck is that? And it, nothing. And again, I hear like shuffling, like someone's shuffling their feet or trying to walk. And I'm like freaking out and I'm not one to get scared because again, 
well yes i do get scared but i like this i like to hear the ghosts and all that and make myself go completely insane and i'm listening and i'm listening and i grab my phone okay this is the case because i have my phone right here on the tripod i grab my phone i turn the flash and i'm like and joe wakes up because i woke him up with my light he's like what are you doing i was like i heard some noise he's like don't even tell me that i'm going back to sleep i was like no really i could have sworn i heard some noise and i hear it again and he's like did you hear it he's like it's your daughter moving in her on her bed trying to get comfortable so she's like shuffling but like i said you hear it it's happening in one room but you hear it in another because it's so empty and it's echoing everywhere so I'm here freaking myself out when it was just my daughter shuffling her feet under the freaking blanket. Oh my God. And he was like, are you serious? I was like, never mind, go back to sleep. Sorry, I woke you up. <laughs> well, besides that, I know her footsteps. So that's why I think we have friends. Now, I know it is not haunted. At least no one has died in here yet because we're the very first owners. The land itself, I don't know. I mentioned it to a couple of my co-workers what had happened and they're like, oh, you should investigate on the land to see if what has happened there before. Maybe you're like, your house is on an Indian burial ground or war happened through there and the ghosts are now trying to live in your house. I was like, as long as they don't bother me and they don't try touching me while I'm asleep, I'm fine. But I might just do that. But I don't know how I would be able to go about looking into the property. So if you have any, if any of y'all know, let me know in the comments how I can find out if maybe something spooky has happened around here. Or if I'm living on a burial ground or dead bodies under my house. I don't know. So if you know how to find that out, let me know in the comments, please. And with everything going on in the house with all the spooky noises and Joe trying to ignore it, I don't know why it was his bright idea to try to scare people. We're walking up the stairs. He goes, he's in the room. I go up and it is pitch black. I turn the corner to turn the light on in the room and Joe decides to go, Wah! and I, I felt my soul leave my body. It left and came back. It was, I had the worst chills. I felt like throwing up. It was horrible. I was like, I'm gonna get you back. I screamed so loud. But he scared the living soul out of me. So I was like, I'm gonna get you back. I'm gonna get you back. I got him back. Joe's downstairs playing the video game. He's playing with some friends, so he has his headset on. I was like, perfect, perfect. So I told him, oh, I'm going upstairs. I'm gonna go lay down and go to sleep already. He's like, all right. I go upstairs. I get it like maybe like two, three minutes. So I'm like creeping down the stairs, trying to make as little noise as I possibly can. The couch that he's sitting at, you cannot see down the hallway. So I'm like, this is perfect. I'm like walking against the wall as close as I can so he does not see me. And then at the end of the hallway, we have a coat closet. So I open it without him knowing and I just swung it open. And he's like, so quiet. And I can hear where he can like to see around the corner, but he couldn't see me because the door's like open. He's like, so quiet. So the door swings back and I swing it open again. And he's like, bro, the door just opened by itself. I'm just gonna ignore it and pretend that just didn't happen. I couldn't hold it any longer. I busted out laughing so hard. I'm like, that's what you get. This is payback for the last time. He's like, I hate you. <laughs> so we're there laughing and he's like upset, but he's laughing, but he's pissed. And he's like, I can't believe you did that to me. 
I was like, I was just gonna pretend like that did not just happen. I was gonna ignore it. I was about to get off the game and go lean down with you. <laughs> I was like, that is what you get. You cannot prank. You cannot scare me because I will get you to die scores. But besides that, not much has changed from the last video to this one. Oh, besides, I got new glasses. I don't know if you noticed from the last one to this one, these are actually new because according to the optometrist, which I kind of already knew, I, my eyesight got worse, way worse. Like even with the other glasses that I had, um, I could barely see out of them. And it wasn't so much because it was so scratched up because they are so scratched up. They were so bad, I could not see out of them. On top of that, I've had those glasses for years. Like, I'm not even exaggerating when I say I've had those glasses since Gaia was maybe like two years old, I would say. And I, and she is now nine. So yeah, I've had them for years to the, to where the lens itself was, was turning yellow. When I would put them on, whatever's supposed to be white had like a hint of yellow in it. So I'm like, I know this is not normal. Like, it can't be my eyes making things look yellow. I knew my eyesight was bad. Now, I don't know how bad it was until the optometrist said, I can revoke you from getting your driver's license if I wanted to. But these new glasses should help you see a whole lot better. You are practically almost legally blind. So I can revoke you from getting your driver's license because it is a safety hazard for you to be driving without your glasses on and without you being able to see. So I'm like, okay, fine. She's on. And also I've noticed when you look at something, it takes like a couple seconds for your eyes to focus onto it and to be actually be able to see. And I've noticed that with your pupils, it takes a while for it to dilate. It takes a while for you to even focus to what you're looking at. So I'm gonna recommend for you to go to vision therapy. I did not know vision therapy was even a thing. I was like, what is vision therapy? She's like, there's only one in San Antonio. They are very rare. Uh, so now, which I haven't gone, I haven't scheduled it, but I'm supposed to be going to vision therapy because supposedly my brain and my eyes are not like comprehending with each other. And it's like a delay in the signal. I'm telling my brain what I'm looking at. My brain telling my eyes to focus. I don't know. I have no idea. So yeah, that happened. And then I've noticed that I've been having problems hearing from my right ear. And I've been getting like sharp pains. And then my ear starts like doing a like very high pitched ring and it goes on for minutes, not seconds. You know how like whenever your ear rings and you're like, oh, someone's talking about you and it just rings for like maybe like 10, 15 seconds. No, mine rings for like maybe, I think the last time I timed it, the longest it rang was like, I would say five minutes. It rang for five minutes. It went pitch blank, like I couldn't hear nothing. And then when I finally got my hearing back on my right ear, it sounded like everything was underwater. So I was like, this is not normal. I know there's something wrong with my ear. I'm losing my hearing from my right ear. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go get my ears checked. Sure enough, I'm in the early stages of hearing loss in my right ear. So now I need a hearing aid. On top of that, I am blind and I am deaf from one ear. And then on top of that, I have hip problems. I know I need hip surgery, but I don't wanna be put under anesthesia because I'm afraid of it. So I'm blind, I'm deaf, and I need hip surgery. What else can go wrong? But yeah, these hearing aids are no joke. They are expensive. And that's the, the cheapest one that I plan on getting, and that is the lowest of the low price, is $1,300. They range anywhere from $1,300 to $5,000. And the one that I'm getting, the cheapest one, $1,300. And I'm saving every pretty penny that I can to try to save up for it because 
I need it. I can be sitting on the couch. Joe sits on the right side of me. He's talking to me and I can't hear him. And it takes me a while to me to comprehend that anyone is talking to me from the right side. And yes, I could hear sometimes. But it's like, you know, that teacher from, I believe it's the Charlie Brown, the teacher, when she's talking about that is what I hear until I turn and I'm focused on you. And then I can hear you. And I've noticed it too because sometimes people will be talking to me and they're like maybe like not even two feet away from me. And they're speaking to me and I'm like, to be honest, I did not hear what you just said. And it's not that I'm trying to ignore the people, I'm really not. I just really cannot hear it. And it takes me a while to even comprehend to what you're telling me. So sometimes you have to like, hey, Anita, and then speak to me. Catch my attention first and then speak to me because at least until, for now, until I get my hearing aid on. All of that has happened within the, this past summer. Got new glasses, found that I need a hearing aid. The summer I was supposed to actually go get my hip checked, but I avoided that because, I, like I said, I don't want to be put under anesthesia. Maybe if they would consider putting me in the epidural, just numb the bottom half so you can do, fix whatever needs to be fixed on my hip, my broken hip actually. But no, if it's under anesthesia, I will not do it. I, yeah, no, I will not. Anesthesia scares me. I am done. Looks like it. Now again, I'm not trying to get my hair perfectly straight. This was just something simple for right now. And actually, the reason why I'm straightening my hair is because I need to trim my hair. I have noticed that my curls have been like dying down. They don't curl as much anymore. But because it's been so long since I have last trimmed my hair that the split ends the dead ends and everything at the bottom is weighing my hair and my curls down hair tip always get your hair trimmed at least a month and a half to two months so that way your hair stays looking healthy and shiny if you have curly hair the dead ends do not weigh your curls down every time you trim your hair it revives your hair and another hair tip, don't mind these little new growth hairs, but I forgot to mention another hair tip. Whenever you're straining your hair, but you want that bottom, you don't want it slicked down, kind of like the way I have it. I have it like this only because I need it as straight as I can. So that way I can try to get it as perfect as I can when I trim my own hair. But if you want the volume, you grab the hair and you straighten up from i would say maybe from the ear up you straighten up every time you straighten up it gives you the volume if you just straighten down you're just gonna get a flat flat hair i know many people are like oh, why isn't it the same as a hairstylist they did it and they gave me volume when i do it it just looks like i got nothing but that is why because remember you straighten all the way through to the end and if you want volume you straighten it up to get the volume or if you want extra volume you grab it at the end you kind of do this little hump thingy i don't even know what to call it and it gives it that kind of i don't know if you can see it right here gives it that extra volume so yeah those are my hair tips and again always 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 put on hair heat protectant when you're going to put any type of heat on your hair whether it's a straightener a curling iron the blow dryer the sun when you're outside especially during the summer when you're out in the beach put on heat protectant on your hair that is why either a your hair color does not last long b your hair dies faster because it gets split ends and it gets dry faster because you're not putting that heat protectant as much as you protect your skin protect your hair it is kind of like a sunblock for hair put it on but that is it for today that's my little kind of like life house update with me with my glasses my hearing aid my haunted house our friendly ghost me almost burning down the house and flooding it 
so yeah that all of that has happened ever since the last time I was on here which was I would say five months ago so yeah thank y'all so much for watching this video so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this by manifesting y'all with a whole bunch of love happiness 